Behind me is Page Stadium, which is normally the home to Loyola Marymount. But tonight, USC Baseball plays host to the Michigan Wolverines at Page, with renovations at Dado Field already underway. What was supposed to be a victory celebration ends in chaos. Associated Press is reporting that up to 10 people are injured following a shooting in Kansas City near the Chiefs' victory parade. Two armed people have been detained, and the condition of the victims remain unclear. You heard that right. The World Series is set between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Texas Rangers after two great seven-game series. Thanks, Grace. Football season might be officially out of close, but don't worry. Baseball is back. USC starts its season this Friday, but first, let's take a look at how the Trojans finished last season. Well, look, we saw the fight in this team this past weekend. They came back from a 14-point deficit, even took the lead in the fourth quarter, but then it started unraveling. Good teams can't have a targeting penalty in the last two minutes to give the opposing offense momentum, and that is exactly what happened with Bear Alexander. I can't even tell if this is a good team anymore. Men's water polo is nearing the end of its season as the Trojans prepare for the Crosstown Showdown. Heading into the final weekend of regular season play, the Trojans sit at fourth in the MPSF West Division with a 1-4 conference record. The Trojans can move up in the standings depending on the results of this weekend, but that will only affect seeding at the MPSF tournament. But what a hire for UCLA. They already brought in Deshaun Foster, a really breath of life compared to Chip Kelly on the recruiting side, and you get one of the best offensive play callers Maybe in NFL history, sure, he had Patrick Mahomes, but what a great hire by UCLA. The Trojans keep stacking wins, taking down the Oregon State Beavers 58-50 at Gill Coliseum. USC never trailed in this one, silencing the big Beaver crowd. The Trojans have now won six straight conference games after starting 4-4 four and four in Pac-12 play. Juju Watkins had an off shooting night, but still ended up with a double-double, bringing down 11 rebounds. The Trojans head back to Galen Center this week to take on Colorado and Utah, two teams the Trojans lost to earlier this season. Back to you guys in the studio. Look, man, Oregon State is a bad team. Look what Abraham did against the number four and number five team in the country. Oh, and did I forget to mention, against Cal, she also won the 200-yard freestyle, the 100-yard freestyle, and touched second in the 500-yard freestyle. She's not only helping USC clinch wins, she's doing so many other things to help the Trojans win. Well, you might see a lot more Rodman. We're going to see a lot more Abraham. She's only a freshman. She'll be here for three more years, potentially, and she's already doing this as a freshman. I'd much rather have my Trojan of the Week be a player on the number seven team in the country, beating up on the number five and number four teams in the country. But we will send it back to Terrence at the desk. The one silver lining to USC's two and six start is that the 2023 Trojans started out at three, four, and one with all three of those wins coming against a Marist program that finished the 2023 campaign with a 306 winning percentage. The Trojans would finish their 2023 campaign with 34 wins and on the verge of the NCAA tournament. Easy answer here is Blake Snell, and I think MJ, you might get to him in a minute. Snell. But Jordan Montgomery has had at least 30 starts in each of the last three seasons. He is on the wrong side of 30, but he's still producing. He is an innings eater. Happy Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, there won't be any love between us because it's time to debate Trojan of the Week. I've chosen Justin Braun to represent Team Thomas. Braun did it all at the Eagle Elite Invitational in Boston. The sophomore won the 200 meter with a blazing 20.92 second time, then followed that up in the men's 4x4, helping the Trojans set the fastest time in the NCAA this season. It was also the second fastest time on that event in USC history but it's MLB's new jerseys that are all over people's social media timelines. Nike and Fanatic started the jersey redesign process back in 2018, taking over from Majestic, MLB's jersey manufacturer since 2005. Nike was in charge of designing, and Fabletics, who acquired Majestic in 2017, would produce the jerseys at the same factories that Majestic used. The two companies finally released the new threads this season, and like Chris said, they are downright awful. Behind me is Page Stadium, which is normally the home to Loyola Marymount. But tonight, USC Baseball plays host to the Michigan Wolverines at Page, with renovations at Dado Field already underway. USC's athletic department is giving the 50-year-old field an uplift as part of a larger renovation project for USC Athletics. The Dado refresh is tailored to improving the fan experience, creating new social spaces, more concession stands, and updated restrooms. There is no official timetable from USC on when the Trojans can return to their University Park home, but demolition has commenced. 
Until then, USC will split its home games between Orange County Great Park, Page Stadium, and UC Irvine. Tonight is USC's first of two home games at Page as the home team. Last week, the Trojans already played at LMU, but were sitting in the visitors' dugout against the Lions. The old adage of the seventh inning stretch song rings too true this season, as the Trojans will have to be taken out to the ball game every single time. For Annenberg Media, I'm Thomas Johnson. Back to you guys in the studio.